Hey guys, my name is Sawan. Today we're going to show you four different ways that you can move to the back forehand corner. So the first one will be the very typical one that you've seen where you shuffle and then hop out to the side when you don't have much time. Second one will be when you have a little bit more time that you can actually move to the corner and then cross your legs as you hit. Uh, the third one will be where you have even more time. You probably see this in more in doubles and singles is where you can shuffle to the back Use both of your feet and then jump up on the spot and smash. Fourth one will be where you actually don't have much time and you have to move back, where you have to cross your legs and get try to get behind the shuttle and hit a transition shot so you can get back into the rally. So the first one is the one where you shuffle and jump out to hit the shuttle. You usually do this when you don't have a lot of time or you want to actually hit an offensive shot, like an attack or a smash, sorry. What you want to do is make sure you have a split stance and then you're ready to go. And then you want to make sure you turn out. So pivot out to your forehand side. So I'm a left hand. So what I'll do is split and then turn out and then shuffle. So you want to make sure split, turn out and then shuffle to the corner. And some things that you should try to remember is when you're shuffling out is that you should try to stay low so you don't lose your balance and then your legs are loaded so then you can jump up when the timing is right. You gotta make sure when you're shuffling out, you jump out on the very last step and hit at the same time. So it's not really that you shuffle and then stop and hit, it's actually shuffle, 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 jump and hit at the same time. So you wanna make sure your shot and that last jump is in sync so then your timing is good and you don't mess up the shot. And another one I've seen is when, when you're moving out, they don't turn out at the start of the movement and they usually go backwards and again, they lose their balance and they make a mistake. And if you're someone who crosses their legs before they start moving to this shot, they would delay your movement and therefore you won't be able to take a shuttle high and perform an attacking shot. So if you really want to make sure you get on top of the shuttle with this movement, make sure you're actually shuffling and you're not crossing your legs over because that will be a whole different shot and that's more of a defensive movement and this, that won't allow you to get to the shuttle in time. This one is seen a lot in singles and doubles. In doubles it's really beneficial if you're the backcourt player because most of the time the backcourt player is moving side by side and not really front back. So when you chase the shuttle down, you should be able to use this footwork to actually hit a smash or a drop shot. Whereas in singles this comes in handy a lot of the times as well when you're trying to attack. But for doubles players this is a must and you should always try to learn this movement because most of the time that your opponents won't give you nice high lifts to smash. It's usually someone pushing you side by side and trying to make you chase the shuttle. So when someone's hitting really fast shots side by side, you need to be able to jump up and still catch it and then keep attacking. Um, the second movement we're going to talk about is the one where you have a bit more time and you can actually rotate your legs as you're hitting. The way to perform the second shot is the same as the first one. You start with a split stance. You turn out to the direction you're going, shuffle out, but because the shuttle is a little bit slower than before and you have more time, you can actually hit and then rotate your body as you hit. Some things that you should focus on is again staying low when you're moving so you're not losing your balance. So, the best time to use this second shot is when the shuttle is a little bit high and you have more time and it's a bit closer to you. So like with the first one where it's a fast shuttle and you don't have much time and you're really chasing it, 
then you're forced to jump out. Whereas this one, when you have a little bit more time and it's a bit closer to you, you should be able to get under it and hit and rotate your feet at the same time. You can see this being used in doubles and singles, but I would say more in singles and less in doubles because one thing that it does really well is it allows you to actually hit the shot, transfer your momentum to go forward and get back into the shuttle. So someone lifts you to the back and then you're doing a smash and then you know the next shuttle is going to be at the net and then they're going to play a block shot. This will allow you to actually hit your smash, rotate as you're hitting so that your momentum is going forward so then getting to that front court shot will be much easier. Whereas in doubles, you don't really do that because you have a partner in front of you. So the chances of you hitting and rotating and then running to the net is very low, right? So again, singles players, this is really useful. You should be practicing that all the time because a lot of the times if you hit a really good smash, people tend to block the shot and that means you need to go to the net to get that. Therefore, this will allow you to hit and rotate and get your momentum to go forward with it so that you can get to the shot quicker. The third shot we'll be talking about is the one where you have quite a lot of time, it's a high lift. Um, this can be seen a lot in doubles, even more than in singles, because it will allow you to get under it and actually jump up with both of your feet and perform a really good jump smash. The way to perform this is with a split stance. And then you're going to shuffle out. And jump up with both of your feet. So shuffling out, jump up, and then go for your smash or a drop shot. Some of the mistakes I've seen with this is the timing is very difficult for a lot of people, especially if you're a beginner, because again, jump smash is not the easiest shot to perform for everyone, and getting that timing right is really crucial. So when you're moving to this shuttle, you want to make sure that you're jumping up at the right time. A lot of people tend to jump up, come down and then smash. So when you're doing that, one thing is you're not taking advantage of the jump smash and trying to hit the shuttle up high. So you're jumping up, coming down and then hitting. So you're not getting that angle that you should be getting with the jump smash. Singles player, this will usually come in handy if it's a half court or a, a three quarter court lift. Um, they probably won't use this a lot in a full lift that goes all the way to the back or to the baseline just because it's just a bit harder to hit and then retreat back to the court and cover the rest of the court afterwards. Whereas in doubles, because you have a partner in front of you, you should be able to get under it, jump up, perform a jump smash, and then your partner should be able to cover in front of you if they play a block shot. So the fourth one is the more defensive one out of all the footwork. So this one is where you would try to hit the shuttle when you're really late or the opponent hits a really good push. You don't have time to actually take it up high. So you're more really actually chasing the shuttle. So where the first three you would shuffle to the corner, this time you're actually crossing your legs. So the really good thing about crossing your feet is actually it allows you to cover a lot of distance. Whereas the shuffling is a very quick but it only covers short distance. So Again, you would get into a split stance Cross your push off leg behind your lunging leg So I'm a left hander so my right leg would go behind and then my left leg would come in front So if you're a right hander it should be the opposite Your left leg would go across behind your right leg and then your right leg will come out, lunge, and then play the shot. So some things to focus on when you play the shot is make sure you're really staying low and in balance. You don't want to be standing really up high and trying to do this because the shuttle is going really fast past you and it's most likely going to hit the ground before you get there. And the second thing you really want to focus is the racket head. So when you move to this, make sure your racket head is actually up high and open. So when you get there, you have the time to hit. 
You don't want to do this thing where you get there and then suddenly pull the racket back and try to hit and try to perform all those things at the same time because you really won't have enough time to do that. So, so think about opening your racket up as you're moving and keeping that racket head up high and then executing the shot. Um, this shot can honestly be used in singles or doubles but you really see this mostly in singles because it's one person covering an entire court so there will be times where that person will get caught with a trick shot or the opponent plays a really good shot past them and then they have to cover that corner. So in doubles you probably won't see this as much because there's two people on the court and the backcourt player should be able to cover either corner quite well. But again, if you're really in trouble in doubles and then someone get, does get past you, then you can actually still chase the shuttle down and then maybe hit a really high, nice clear with this and then reset the rally.